Good evening, freaks and friends, and welcome to Math Rants. I'm your host, Math Machine, and I fucking hate Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. I can hear you asking already. Math, why do you hate Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network? They've never done anything to you. You weren't there, man! You don't know! You don't know! As some of you may recall, I am something of an animation freak. Generally, I prefer animated movies over live action movies, but especially television series. I prefer animated shows over live action shows. And Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network are, predominantly speaking, the major distributors of animated shows. I'm going to ignore Disney Channel, Disney XD, all of Disney's 20-something channels at this point because they are a separate entity unto themselves and they more focus on things that they specifically try to do rather than uh, trying to just be a wide spectrum. Same goes for Hub. That's more child-oriented shows that they probably didn't make themselves. They just got or bought the rights to distribute. And then the the basic channels that do the Saturday morning cartoon things, well, <laughs> it's from a bygone generation that I am not a part of. So anyway, these two channels, while I appreciate that they are the major distributors of animated shows here in the United States, I also hate them for that fact because they are incredibly stupid. Every few years, and it's it's not like they're both incredibly stupid at the same time too, which is weird. About every four or five years, they switch places. One will be doing something relatively good, the other one will just keep fucking up and fucking up and fucking up, and then they'll switch because apparently they like to take turns or something. I've never figured it out. It's it's astounding how it's almost like they have never, well, they've rarely ever done it at the same time so that they could either both be good or both be bad. Right now, I am particularly pissed with Nickelodeon. It's, it's their turn. And what brought about this... I'll explain in a few minutes because it's it's a bit complex to say the least. I watched Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network since the 90s. I remember when and that was probably the only time I could say that both channels actually were competent was in the mid 90s. Cartoon Network didn't have much in the way of original programming, if any at all. What they did was they bought the rights to a lot of Hanna-Barbera shows, uh, a lot of old Looney Tunes shows, uh, animated shorts that they used to show in theaters and didn't really have a home for anymore, a lot of classic shows uh, from, shoot, the 20s on un until about the, well, really, 80s, but thereabouts. And Nickelodeon, on the other hand, decided that while they, too, were going to get some classic programming, Cartoon Network had a bigger budget, they noticed. So they had to come up with their own programming because they, Cartoon Network had already bought the rights to everything under the sun. And a lot of the stuff that they came up with was actually pretty innovative for the day. Uh, case in point, Ren and Stimpy. Oh, my God! I still question to this day how they got away with, uh, how they got past the censors at any point in time with Ren and Stimpy. That show was, whoo, Rocco's Modern Life. There's another one that nobody ever seems to remember. But if you watch just like one episode of Rocco's Modern Life, oh, good God, how did you get past the censors, people? Seriously. It amazes me. And those were really... Creative shows had fantastic writing, uh, were very much loved, generally considered to have been canceled pretty short or pretty quickly and just ran too short, but 
considering what they were, I can totally understand it. It's the whole Invader Zim thing. Uh, the main reason, actually, Invader Zim got canceled after only two seasons was because the uh, the director, who was also the artist, creator, etc., uh, from there, he was known before that for a comic, a very, very dark comic. This is this is a guy who has a weird mentality. I believe his name is Vasquez. I, I'm butchering that pronunciation. I know I am. He is very dark and looks at light and sort of like parodies life morbidly, and you, it's an extreme parody, but it's hilarious the way he does it. The main reason that I think has been acknowledged by everyone that uh, Vasquez got canceled by uh, Nickelodeon is that he was asking for too much money because he wanted to make Invader Zim look really good. And he did. It was a very highly detailed show for its day, the early 2000s. And it just cost them too much, which I don't understand to this point because they knew who they were getting in. They knew that they were getting into something like that with the artist himself. They should have been prepared for that. They weren't, or they just didn't care. They only wanted him for his name because he had a really huge cult following before the show, and then after the show, whoo, his popularity just skyrocketed. But it only lasted two seasons because they had to have money. Uh, another example is... a. Uh, examples. I could, I could go on all day listing shows that have been cut off in their prime. In the early days, it was just like random shows that tried to be innovative that are now popular, but I don't think got the viewership that they needed back in their original airing day. These days, however, the problem seems to be action shows. Neither network really knows what to do with action shows. Uh... Young Justice, Teen Titans, uh, Avatar, Legend of Korra. Here's where we're going. These are all shows that the, the networks just have absolutely no idea what they're doing. And uh, Samurai Jack. Whew, how did I forget that one? All shows that the networks just have absolutely no idea what to do with. Because people keep saying, we want action shows. The networks try and deliver. They don't know what to do with it. It either starts to cost them too much money, or there isn't enough viewership because the networks don't know how to advertise it. Which now leads us into why I am pissed with Nickelodeon at this moment in time. This is a strange tale, and I'll go slow, because even explaining it, I have difficulty following it. What happened was, Legend of Korra has had two seasons so far. They're in the middle of their third season. What Legend of Korra is, it's the sequel to Avatar The Last Airbender. Not the Avatar movie by James Cameron, or uh, the Last Airbender movie made by M. Night... Hey, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan! Though his, that movie was based off of the television series... Don't take any consideration to that. The movie was complete and utter trite at best. It, at worst, it was complete bullshit. Uh, the Everybody hated that. Uh, Avatar fans, movie fans, animation fans, you name it. There's people that hate it. I have yet to see one person that actually tries to defend that piece of shit. The series it was based off of is really, really good. It, Avatar The Last Airbender has been acknowledged by many to be one of the greatest cartoon series in the last 10 years, if not more. It's been considered one of the best cartoons of the 2000s, if not the best, and nearing the best action cartoon of all time. It lasted for three seasons, which is what the creators wanted for it. They only wanted three seasons. They got that. They were able to tell a beautiful story. They've since gone on to making a comic book based on directly after the series ended to about 20 years after. There's a general timeline thing. It's nearing completion, I believe, if not completed already. 
you should check it out. It's really good. But uh, what happened afterwards was a year or two after Avatar The Last Airbender had finished, Nickelodeon came up to the creators uh, of the show and said, we want you guys to make a something else involving the Avatar universe. And they said, okay, we'll make a spin-off miniseries. This was originally only supposed to be uh, 13 episodes, like 6 or 13 episodes. We'll make a spin-off miniseries set at about 70 years in the future, have it star a completely new protagonist, call it Legend of Korra. It'll be fun. We'll have a good time with it. What happened during production, and this is where it starts to get weird, uh, Nickelodeon actually did do a good job of hyping the show. And then they said, okay, we're going to make this into a full season. Seasons in America are only, <clears throat> for animated shows, are only 13 episodes, by the way. Generally speaking. Uh, so they turned it into a full season. Then, as production continued further, uh, and near the and they were nearing the end of production, they confirmed that there was going to be a second season. I believe that this happened because right... I, I'm trying to remember exactly when this was confirmed. I want to say it was either right after the first episode of the show aired or shortly before they had confirmed that there was going to be a second season. And I think that what happened was because it had become so popular and everyone was demanding that they wanted more of it, Nickelodeon came back and said, we want you guys to do more. And they didn't plan to. They had already finished making this, uh, the first season, which they thought was going to be their, their only season. So the, the show ended on a very good high note. Uh, after the first season, uh, it ended in a place where it could have ended as a show, and it would have been really good. And it was a really popular season. Uh, it had, I believe, something in the ballpark of 4.5 million viewers, uh, according to the Nielsen ratings, whatever that amounts to anymore. And it, was, it wasn't it was as good as Avatar The Last Airbender, but it was like just under it. So pretty much it was the best show of the year. Then, after about a year and a half, they released season two, which by that point, we had learned that there were going to be four seasons. So they released season two, and it was a mess. The, the story was a mess. The art was different. It, the, the writing was all over the place. It seemed like it was a product of being rushed out the door because Nickelodeon had given them no advance notice so they didn't know where to go and they were told that they had to do four seasons in total so three and so they're up to they have to do three seasons now that they know they're doing where they had only planned to do just one period It was still a good show, and I think that it ended relatively nicely uh, for the second season, but it was just a jumbled up mess because of the way Nickelodeon gave them such short notice and just was a hassle to deal with in general, I believe. Now we're getting to where it starts to get a little weird. What happened was, uh, for season three, it got released about two or three months ago in a lot of the Latin American countries. Uh, and I can already tell you're wondering why would it get released in La uh, all these Latin American countries before it gets released here in America if it's an American show. Well, see, big networks these days for animation have this weird little policy of they will still make a show but what they do now is they show it in other countries first uh, Mexico, Canada, uh, 
to anywhere else where it might be more popular first, or just has a big viewership in general first, and then they will bring it here just to make sure that it actually did get the viewership they were expecting from there. Because if it, do, it did from, say, Mexico, it will here in America. And Avatar series is really popular in Latin America. What happened was Nickelodeon's Mexican website, Nick, their own Mexican website, accidentally leaked the first five or six episodes of the show online. Oops. And what happened was uh, that they were able to take them down relatively quickly, like they had noticed that they were online about a day later. The problem is, this is the internet. Uh, you can take it down, but there will be people who will have caught it before you take it down, and sure enough, there were, and... Boy, oh boy, did we go nuts over that here in the States. Woo! We watched, even though it was in Spanish dubbing, which means that it was with a Spanish voice crew, there were a good number of people here in the United States who subbed it, subtitles in English. So people were able to watch the show well, in Spanish, but with English subtitles so that they could know what was going on for the first five or six episodes about three months in advance of this date right now. So Nickelodeon kind of shat themselves when they realized what had happened because this is going to greatly hurt their viewership because people have already seen it. They already know what's going on. They probably won't uh, watch the episodes. They don't seem to realize that people will watch the English version because they like the voice cast as well. Or they like hearing it in their native tongue, even though they know what's going to happen. So then what happened afterwards was they started... They gave one week notice. They showed a trailer for... The Legend of Korra Season 3 premiere one week before it premiered. That's not a lot of time to give us notice. It, it just, I was lucky. I was just channel surfing. I happened on Nickelodeon at that point, and I saw the trailer, and I thought, wow, it's already been a year uh, since the last season? Wait, this seems a little early. They normally air this in fall. And sure enough, then I started seeing what was going on, because... I honestly didn't know about the uh, the leak because I just I was waiting for the season to come on. I didn't realize that something like that had goofed. Apparently, the actual trailer that we saw that aired a week before the show, which has only been going on a month now, was supposed to have aired at San Diego at San Diego Comic-Con, which is happening right now. They were supposed to have shown the trailer right now, and the show itself wasn't supposed to have started until, haha, fall. So what they did was they put two episodes out every Friday to try and get to the episodes that were leaked as quickly as they could so that they could try and air them at a normal rate again. Well, that kind of backfired in their face because they gave absolutely no notice that the show was airing, and the few people that did, most people that I've talked to that actually did watch the show uh, on TV had only watched it because their DVR was set up to record new episodes from last year. They didn't even realize that it was airing until their DVR recorded it for them. And I think that that would have been the, the case with pretty much everybody because they gave us no notice. 1.5 million was the viewership that the Nielsen ratings said for the episodes. It didn't help that this was Friday at 8 p.m., which is pretty much the death slot for any animated show. Not that I don't have confidence that this show could compete with any good Friday show, or just anything on Friday in general. But Friday at 8 p.m. for a show with absolutely no notice or no advertising behind it 
is going to hurt. And it did. They finally got to a point where they were caught up, and this, this week, this Friday, they showed one episode, and then they canceled the show. Kinda. They are going to no longer be showing the show on Nickelodeon TV. They're going to be releasing one episode a week online because they said that, well, it does better online than it does on TV right now. No shit, Sherlock! This is not affecting Season 4. Season 4 is already in production, and they can't get their money back on it. Nickelodeon would be basically shooting themselves in the foot. They've already paid out for the contract. They can't get anything back from it, so they figure might as well just get a show out of it and hope that we can get something back. But this has just been just a, just a insane experience of things that have gone wrong because they were just sloppy on their end. And it seems like they're blaming the show because, oh, it didn't have viewership or, oh, nobody wanted to watch it. Well, you gave us no notice and then you took it down right as we were trying to get notice that the show was happening in, in general. And I feel like this is going to be happening a lot, especially in the next few years when uh, online distribution is becoming more and more rampant for every show under the sun, but especially animated shows. Because these networks seem to be predominantly just wanting to show uh, reruns of episodes of shows that have done well in the past. Uh, there's a reason that Nickelodeon is often re regarded as the Spongebob network. And especially action shows have just the hardest time, and this did not help. I'm pretty sure the Cora could have made it, but then Nickelodeon just dropped the ball 20 times over. And... It's just insane, but this is one of the things that leads me to believe that we'll never get a continuation of Samurai Jack, or we'll never get a Samurai Jack movie. We'll never get good action shows in general, because the networks will look at this like, oh, well, people don't want action shows. This proves it. They Even Korra couldn't succeed. No, you idiots, you fucked it up. But I digress. At the end of the day, Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon seem to be slipping in quality control at being able to handle their own stuff anymore, and I would not be surprised if this if something like this happens again in the future. And who knows, in the next five, ten years, they may be completely irrelevant in general. There may be just online distribution, uh, single company things that do their own shows that far outweigh them. I don't want to see that because in their heyday, and even to this day, both networks have done really good shows that we would not have seen otherwise. And I hope that they can continue to do that, but if we keep seeing things that, like this, who knows? This has been Math Machine. Going to take an aspirin after talking about this level of stupid, saying, peace out.